favorite word in the whole world is shalom. You are this month asking yourself to explore and discover and seed and grow wholeness. And so when I received your theme for the month, lest you think that I did not create an entirely new sermon for you, <laughs> I, Rep Reverend Mandy, I almost called her Rabbi Mandy. <laughs> She said I could talk on whatever I wanted, but I want to talk where you are. Wholeness, shalom. In Hebrew, every word can be reduced to three letters, which is called a root. That's why Hebrew, although it's a language that you have to learn how to write with new letters, it's actually not that hard to learn. Because every word can be reduced to three letters. And if you know how to find the three letters, you can start to decipher the meaning of the word. And every word that has the same three root letters has something to do with each other. For example, shalom. Here it is. Here are the root. Sh -l -m. Shalom. You drop the vowels and you keep three consonants. Shalom means hello. Shalom means goodbye. Shalom means peace. But the root also begins to tell how to live a life of wholeness and peace. Shalom also means shalem, to repay, to pay your debts. Shalom also means lit shalem, shlimut, to have integrity. Shalom also means completion and wholeness. So that's what I want to ask you this morning is, given all the goodbyes, all the shaloms, and all the hellos, and all the seasons, and all the Januaries, and the Aprils, and things that we gain and things that we lose, how can we find wholeness? Is, is wholeness even attainable? And I'm going to give it to you in 18 words. So I'm coding a lot with you this morning, I'm realizing. 18, do you know what it means in Hebrew? What does it mean? Life! Yes! So just as every word in Hebrew can be reduced to three root consonants, every word is also a number. And 18 spells life. So if you want to know what to give someone for their bar or bat mitzvah, give them money in increments of 18. So when my son had his bar mitzvah, this is a little, maybe a little inappropriate to tell you, but we were counting his checks, and he started to sort them. People would give him $18, $36, $54, and then somebody would give him a 50, and he started to sort it as Jewish, not Jewish. <laughs> check. Don't do that. <laughs> Save a little money. Give them 18. <laughs> give them a little money. Throw them a double high. That's 36. Don't give them 50 bucks. <laughs> 18. So you're going to count with me. I'm going to give you three points, but I'm going to use 18 words. So that's all you have to remember. Then you remember my entire message forever. <laughs> Number one. Four words. How do you achieve shalom and wholeness? You are already whole. There's nothing to do. You were born whole. You're going to die whole. And anyone that made you feel or told you that you were otherwise was lying to you. And there's a lot of lying going on. 
and there's been lying for thousands of years. Two years ago in Michigan, we were immersed in another trial, the trial of predator doctor Larry Nasser. Two years ago on television, I was watching this brave, courageous group of women gymnasts stand up and tell their truth. Allie Rayson, who is an Olympic gymnast, looked at Larry and said to him these words, Larry, do you realize now that we, this group of women you so heartlessly abused over such a long period of time, are now a force and you are nothing? Shame has been used as a weapon to silence anyone who is not in line with the program of those in power. It seems to me that the only way that a person cannot feel whole in their soul is that they are feeling shamed. We are healing in 2020 from shame. Your community is saying, there is no shame here. Leave your shame on Woodward, actually, so it can be run over and disintegrated by all the cars. You are already whole. It's not only a truth, your birthright, which is just absolutely as it is, but it's also for us to reclaim over and over and over again in our lives. Whatever happened where I was told or believed that there's something wrong with me, there's nothing wrong with me. I am me. In the Bible, there is a story about the most misunderstood woman in history. And her name is what other word names did you say? Mary Magdalene. Oh, that's right. There are a lot of them. <laughs> Eve was the first one to be misunderstood. Eve did nothing wrong and everything right. Eve is no sinner. Eve is the mother of spiritual bravery. You're supposed to pick the apple and share it with the people you love. And how do you know you're supposed to pick the apple? Do you know where the forbidden tree was located? Let me ask you another question this way. If God didn't want Eve to pick the apple, where should the tree have been located? <laughs> behind some gigantic spread of poisonous ivy, or at least behind a pricker bush? <laughs> where was the tree? Right in the center of the garden. The clue is hiding in plain sight. Do you know what would happen if God planted an Oreo tree in the center <laughs> of my backyard? <laughs> Do you understand what would happen if every day I woke up and looked at the Oreo tree? <laughs> We are supposed to follow our truth. And as we reclaim, and that's my work, and that's why my book is called Oranges for Eve, because we're done ingesting patriarchal, it's not male, it's patriarchal, lies. Instead, we're going to ingest sweet, delicious messages. Here's a story. Adam was walking through the garden feeling very lonely. And so God asked him, what's wrong, Adam? And Adam said he didn't have anyone to talk to. So God thought for a moment and said he was going to make him a companion and that it would be called wonderful. Wonderful will gather food for you. 
cook for you, agree with your every decision, bury your children, never get you up in the middle of the night to take care of them, never nag you, be the first to admit being wrong when you have a disagreement, and wonderful will never have a headache. Adam inquired, what will wonderful cost? God replied, an arm and a leg. Then Adam asked, what can I get for a rib? <laughs> and that is as good an explanation as any to how it happened. <laughs> Number two. Seven more words. How can you feel whole? Ask this question. How can I help you feel better. The irony of wholeness is that the more you focus on helping other people feel whole, the more whole you'll feel. The Dalai Lama explains that when he lived in Tibet, he assumed growing up that we were happier in the West with all our stuff. But then, as he left Tibet, as the Tibetans were expelled by the Chinese, he looked around and he realized that we were really miserable. In Tibetan, there is no word for suicide because it doesn't exist. The Dalai Lama says that the key to happiness and also ending the suffering on the planet is empathy. In Tibetan, empathy means the inability to bear the suffering of another. So it's inherently nonviolent. If I can't bear your suffering, I can't inflict suffering on you. Am I happy is the wrong question. Am I happy? Are you happy? I don't know. I wasn't really born happy. I'm a Jew. <laughs> a lot went down. I don't know if we were ever happy. What I can say is, I'm not always happy. I have pleasure. Happiness comes and goes. And it cycles so many times through the day I lose track. What I can say is that I have great meaning in my life. And when I concentrate on how can I help you feel better, I then feel happy. <clears throat> Victor Frankl, who's a Holocaust survivor, the author of Man Serves for Meaning, writes it this way. He says, don't aim at success. The more you aim at it, make it a target, the more you're going to miss it. For success like happiness can't be pursued. It must ensue. It is the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself. Happiness, wholeness, is the unintended side effect of dedication to a cause outside greater than oneself. I remember that one of my parents had a friend who had a license plate that said, the one who dies with the most toys wins. Do you remember? It was during like the, when you could personalize your license plates and it was like a very cute license plate. But money is a total distraction. What we are learning in 2020 is that it is not about making money, it is about making meaning. With all the money, there's no meaning. And many, many, many people who have no money have incredible meaning in the center of their lives. There is no correlation 
actually the happiness studies that are done out of Harvard now, Harvard has a department that is dedicated to studying how to be happy. What they found is that after what would equate for us to about $50,000 a person, there's no difference in your happiness. Maybe, I don't know if it's per person, per household. Let's say it's per person. Whether you get more, a lot more, or a lot less, as your basic need, your baseline is met, you're basically the same. It will make, it will make no difference to your life, to how you feel on the inside. And finally, the last seven words. We know now, I, you, are already whole. Seven more. How can I help you feel better? Seven left. How do I want to be remembered? I do many, many funerals. I listen and give many, many eulogies. I think about what will people say at my funeral. I think about this. How do I want to be remembered? When I asked that question to myself about seven years ago, and that's very much the story that's in this book that I recently wrote, the answer came back different than I would have expected. One of the answers was I want the people who are there to know and feel that I completely and overwhelmingly loved them. I want to leave the world a better place for having lived in it. And in Hebrew, the word is the phrase tikkun olam, that we're born into a broken world and it's none of our responsibility to make it perfect, but everyone's to make it better. And there was something else that came unexpected to me. I want my children to remember me as exceedingly brave. I come from a long line of exceedingly brave women, beginning with my grandmother, who overcame all her fear and many, many phobias and at the end of her life had set herself free as our family matriarch. And I watched my grandmother, who was a very scared person who lost her mother when she was little, and then married my grandfather, and then suddenly he died in his 50s. And my grandmother was all alone. She didn't know how to drive. She didn't know how to write a check, let alone go online and do bill pay. She was terrified of water. I remember that she wouldn't even take a bath. But when I was 10 years old, my grandmother and I went to her apartment pool. I took my grandmother's hand, just like a, a banister, and I brought her into the water. And I was only 10 years old, and my grandmother trusted me. And I taught my grandmother how to float. And I held her in my arms like she was in a baptismal fountain or a mikvah. My grandmother was absolutely determined to live the second half of her life different than the first. She was not going to be ruled by fear. And I held her in my arms and she put her head I watched my grandmother emancipate herself until when she died, she could say, and she did say, she was exactly the way she would have wanted to be remembered. How do you want to be remembered? Go to that very tender place in the privacy of your own heart Sit, close your eyes, imagine the room, the sounds, the year, the season outside, 
and the people that will come and sit in the front row, and how they will feel and think and hold you. Because in the end, that's all that matters, are the people that will hold you as you held people when you lit your candles. Go to that place and live your life backwards to today. Then you have your guide and do everything according to that plan. <clears throat> so to conclude, I want to tell you that you have a gorgeous community. You have a tender and fierce reverend. You live in a place now that is like a very precious gem where you say to each other, you are already whole. How can I help you feel better? And you ask yourself, how do I want to be remembered? It's all there in the word shalom. In all the hellos and all the goodbyes and all the ways that we have to make peace with life and the seasons and the fact that it is just so 